The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to build a classic Ben Heck sort of project, a portable Raspberry Pi. We'll include built-in controls to make it great for gaming as well. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I have an Ouya. I've been following the Ouya since its original Kickstarter last summer, and it's cool to see it finally in person. I mean, they do exist, they are real. Uh, this one has a really neat, shiny case. It has the top backers etched onto the side of it. And the controller, uh, is they've been making improvements all along. It's nice and hefty. It's got metal plates on it. They don't come loose. And it actually feels really nice in my hands. And this is actually a mouse. See that? <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be fun to uh, see what games come out for this in the future and uh, how it will help the crowdsourced indie scene in general. Time to play some games. So this is going to be a two-part project to build a portable Raspberry Pi computer that can be used for gaming. I got my start making portable gaming systems, so it's only appropriate I take the small Raspberry Pi and make it portable. The end result will hopefully be a neat little system with built-in controls and screen. Today's episode, we're going to start with the hardware. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hack up a Raspberry Pi and remove the things we don't need, basically make it smaller. We're gonna find an LCD so we can see things. It'll probably be composite video, but that'll be fine for us. We need a power source. I'm thinking lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries. And then finally, we need some controls so you can you know, play the games, move the cursors and whatnot. Uh, a USB joystick should work. The main thing is it needs to work in Linux, but I'm sure we can find one. Here are the parts we're going to use in this episode. We have a Raspberry Pi. This is the newer 512 megabyte version. It has a Debian Wheezy Linux already installed on it. An LCD backup camera. This is similar to what you'd use in your car to back it up. I got this off Amazon. They're pretty cheap these days. It's a little uh, wireless keyboard. This will make it handy to debug and get our system up and running. It's even got a mouse trackpad on it. And the keyboard uses a single dongle right there, so that's handy. We've also got this USB hub with a Wi-Fi connector. Then I have two different USB controllers here. Uh, whichever one has the smallest internal circuitry, that's what we use on our little portable. We have lithium ion battery. It's not too big, uh, well, physically big. It's got a lot of capacity, which is good because the Raspberry Pi, well, this will take up a good amount of juice, especially considering there's an LCD. I have this lithium ion battery charger, so we don't have to worry about making a circuit ourselves. We just plug it into this thing and go. Now let's see if this LCD will run off five volts. The LCD monitor that I bought will only turn on if it has a valid video signal. So I've got my old, old camcorder here with composite video out just to make sure it runs. So I want to see if this runs off five volts. So I took it apart and we've obviously got red and black here, which is going to be positive and negative voltage. And then yellow is going to be our composite uh, display. So I'm going to take my bench power supply, hook up ground, five volts. And then this one will be connected to the LCD. So I'll grab this from over here. Oh, man, I thought we were wireless. You know, it's the year 2013. Apparently not. Let's see. Oh, these are really nice AV cables. I wonder where they came from. Oh, they, they're from my Nintendo at home. Oh, that all looks right. Mm, not quite getting it. All right, it seems to take more voltage than that. Let's try 12, which is the same thing you'd have in your car. Okay, 12 works. All right, let's use the other bench power supply and see how low we can go. I have my other bench power supply hooked up to it now. I can vary the voltage on this, so I'm going to start at 12 and work my way down and see what the minimum voltage is to run this screen. All right, head it down, head it down. 7.96. Still on. Oh, there it goes. 
dies at about six. Okay, so if we use that 7.4 volt lithium uh, ion battery, we should be okay. So we'll put the lithium ion battery directly up to the screen, but then we'll hook it up to a regulator because we don't want to put seven volts into the Pi, we want to put five volts into the Pi. All right, so now we know the dropout voltage of this LCD. Smile, budding photographers. You've got until June 14th to enter the Raspberry Pi camera photo competition. Entering is easy. Using the new Raspberry Pi camera board, take a photo of one of these four categories. Your workshop or den, your Raspberry Pi project, people and pets, or the great outdoors. The winner will receive each new Raspberry Pi accessory released for the remainder of 2013. For more information, visit element14.com forward slash Pi camera. I've hooked up our battery pack here and it's going through the multimeter so we can see what the amperage draw is. Looks like around 340 milliamps, which is about a third of an amp. It's a 2200, 2200 milliamp hour battery. So if we're drawing uh, 0.34 amps, you know, you're probably looking like five to six hours. You know, that's being generous. Of course, we have to hook the Pi up to it as well. So we'll do that next. We have our battery here, a switch, a five volt switching power supply for the Pi itself. The LCD power supply is hooked up directly to the battery. And now we can do a test. So let's switch it on and see what happens. Ah, there it is. So I have it, it will boot directly to main. Uh, how to make things auto run in Linux is probably a little beyond this tutorial, but uh, you can look it up online. Google auto run program in Linux and you'll find the way to do it. And I have my wireless portable keyboard. Who knows, maybe we can work this into the final design. I don't know. It goes this little dot and go right here on the Pi. And there's MAME. I've had this old USB joystick laying around for years and I've almost thrown it away so many times, but I finally found a use for it. it hooks up great to the Raspberry Pi. So in MAME, the multiple arcade machine emulator, we have to set some commands to work on the joystick. Now I have my little keyboard here, but the idea is the final unit won't have a keyboard or at least it won't normally have a keyboard. So some of the stuff we need to set. So it says config menu, right now it's the tab button. So I'm going to hit enter and say it's it's either tab or hit enter again. It can also be that button on the joystick. Okay. Also, I had to make sure that the uh, player controls are hooked up to this joystick here. Looks like they are. One player start will be uh, joystick button start or the number one. So it can work either way. Coin insert is either the select button or number five. So I'm going to go through this list and find all the critical things to controlling the user interface and make sure they're all mapped to the joystick, not just the keyboard. So what I'm doing now is just making sure the joystick uh, works properly. Seems to be working well. I can pause the game with the joystick, I can go to the menu with the joystick, and I can jump out to a different game, all with the joystick buttons. Now that I know the joystick works, I can take it apart and see how small I can get it. But always make sure it works first before you hack it. Check out this snazzy automatic take-up reel. <laughs> so they did that with brushes right there, so we don't need that. Hmm. Looks like all the circuitry is right here. Yeah, see that glop top? This is pretty small inside, I think this will work. So I'm gonna disconnect the power USB connection and then remove this. single-sided. Looks like all the buttons connect right there. That's pretty pretty small. Let's just make sure there's nothing hiding over here like maybe a turbo fire or something.
nothing here but straight circuits, so we can wire directly to that, which means we can wire directly to that. We're gonna to wanna to make a map of what all the buttons are, though. I am testing all these points, you know, versus the USB and making sure I know what everything is. I'm writing it down on this piece of paper so I can keep all these connections straight. That way I can remove this stuff and then wire directly to it. All right, here's all we really need for the joystick. One little board. I have all these connectors written out on my paper here. Also, I'm starting to make the screen more compact. See how it's thin. Er. So now I can kind of start thinking about how this will go together. Maybe this pie will go here. Maybe this will go here and fold down like that. I'm going to remove as many parts as I can from the Raspberry Pi. Like this ethernet adapter, which I never use. So it's through hole and it's lead free, so it's a little hard to do. So I can't really use a normal desoldering iron. So what I'm doing is have my iron here set to a high temperature. And I've got a big blob of solder and I'm going back and forth between the points. And each time I do, I'm like kind of pulling it with my other finger loose. So slowly it gets rocked away. And then just going slowly, step by step, it'll, it'll eventually come loose. Ah, got it. And I'll do that for the rest of the components or until I lose my mind. I've removed quite a few things from the Raspberry Pi here to make it slimmer. I'm gonna do a few more mods, but I wanna make sure I didn't brick it first. So I'll switch it on. Oh good, it still boots. I've gotta start thinking about the form factor, that is how this all goes together in some sort of portable. I mean, maybe the Raspberry Pi is here, maybe it's under here, does it open, does it fold? Where does the battery go? The battery will probably go in the back on the center, so if your hands grip, they grip around it. Where does the controller go? Maybe it goes over here. I mean, something like that might not be too bad. That's what I've got to figure out next is how this goes together. Here's a configuration I think will work. We'll put the joystick right behind the Raspberry Pi here. We'll leave the HDMI in place so you can still use it. We'll put a USB right here or put it back in. Put the screen here. And then what I did was I took the battery pack apart to change its shape because there's two cells in it. And if we put them out like this, we can make the unit like basically like this and only this thick. If we had the cells together in a pack of two, we'd have to put it in the rear, which would make it thicker. So I think this is our best bet. Although of course we have to rewire the safety chip back onto the lithium pack. I'll probably put it right here. Lithium batteries, they're very powerful, which means they also can be dangerous. So take care when soldering them. So to attach this joystick PCB to the Raspberry Pi, I made a mark first of where it goes. And uh, this is only single-sided boards. So we don't have to worry about any sort of, you know, short circuits. However, it's uh, not level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these little discs on the surface of the Raspberry Pi on the flat areas around the components, which will level it out. That way this thing can sit nice and straight. See that? Now it doesn't chatter around. This is a chip that uh, properly charges the battery. So I have to reattach it here. And I think if I put it like this, it should fit together. So I'm kind of building it or assembling the pieces in the shape of what they'll be. All right, yeah, that should work just fine. In our previous episode, we talked about rewiring USB devices. And I've done that here. I've put a USB port over here on the side so you can get at it from the top along with the HDMI. And then the other USB device, I've attached the uh, controller itself. And I've used actual USB wire from inside of a you know USB device just so we have the best possible connection. So see we have the twisted pair of white and green along with power and ground. Now I'm drawing a shape of a case around this. So you can get an idea of how that kind of goes together. You know, on the outside, we need a minimum of at least an eighth of an inch thick wall, probably more like three sixteenths or a quarter. And then in that, you have the screws. You know, so all of this adds to the overall size. Something else you need to think about is where to put all the buttons. If you look at this from a top-down perspective, Obviously the batteries take up the full thickness at the bottom, which makes the overall unit thicker, but that means we can't put any buttons down there. 
and the buttons we need, there's actually uh, seven, of, no, uh, eight of them. There's back, coin, start, menu, pause, and then one, two, three, four action buttons. So obviously we want the four action buttons to go here, you know, in your typical quadrant pattern. But then other buttons we need to put someplace else. So maybe we could put like the start buttons here and the select buttons above the joystick. So what I'll probably do, the reason I'm talking about this now is because I need to add a few more things in this, like switches and voltage regulators. So I have to put those in a place that won't interfere with our possible button placement. So I have to kind of think ahead as I do this skeleton version. But you can see, you get an idea of how it's gonna to come together. The USB joystick I was hacking earlier uh, didn't work very well once I took all the parts off. I really don't know why. However, I don't have time to try to make it work. I'm just gonna discard it and do something new. So I got this um, Teensy 2.0 plus plus. Teensy is a development platform like Arduino. However, it uses a different type of AVR chip. This particular chip, you can hook it up to your device as a USB device, not a serial to USB, but actually as a USB device. And you can write it to simulate HIDs, well not simulate, to be HIDs, a human interface device. In this case, I have it hooked up as a joystick. So I have this analog joystick and I can put buttons on it. Let me show you an example. Okay, here's the window that shows the controller properties. I can move this analog joystick. And you can see it reacts on the screen. And then here, I have the button set, and I have them with the internal pull-ups, which means I don't need external resistors, which will save us space. I can just hit these to ground, and you can see we have the first four buttons. Those will be the action buttons in your game. And then we'll have like, uh, uh, find it here. insert coin, start, pause, menu, and go back. So yeah, that little device will give us all the control we need and it works in Linux, I've already tested it. Here are all the parts we assembled today. We have the joystick, Raspberry Pi, power adapter, LCD, and the modified battery pack. So between now and the next episode, I'm gonna design a case to put this in so we can finish it up. Today's viewer question comes from Artemis who asks, Ben, I noticed while watching your show that you do not observe ESD safety. ESD, or electrostatic discharge, can cause severe damage to components. Why aren't you more careful? Well, Artemis, to be honest, I've never really had issues with static electricity in my shop. It's all cement. But when I'm working at home where it's carpeted, I do have to be careful. In fact, I once built up a charge just sitting on my couch for a few minutes that fried out an Xbox controller I was working on and blew the polyfuses in my laptop's USB ports. It was pretty bad, so watch out for static. If you see carpet or cats, run. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to design and build a custom case for the Raspberry Pi Portable and show it in action. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.